Hello and welcome to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life. But I'm not painting today. I want to show you how acrylic paint is made, what goes into acrylic paint. And basically, let's see if we can mix some of that. Um, sounds simple? Well, it is. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so what have we got? Well, before we do anything, um, we need to weigh certain materials out, but and we use a digital scales for that. Um, but I'm not going to do that today because I've already pre-done that um, for speed. Um, I will. I'm not going to tell you with exact measurements as yet because that's going to be done at the end of the video. Because because I just want to show you, basically, I just want to get into it. So, paint is made up from pigment like this, and there's a wide a wider range of pigments. Um, we get all these wonderful, wonderful colours that we can get. Um, earth tones, um, standard primary colours. We can get, we can get titanium whites. We can get zinc whites. We get raw siennas, and the list goes on and on and on. You can also find your own pigments, which has videos uh, on that in um, the i cards. If you want to click the i cards over there, there's a little thing that will come across. Anyway, so. It's got pigment. In that pigment, um, it's also got some binder. Now, this is acrylic resin, pure acrylic resin, that and that. There's a few other things in there, like fillers and water and anti-foaming agents and all this type of stuff, which I'm going to go into very, very briefly. And then, as I said, it'll all be explained completely at the end of the lesson. But I know you want to watch me mix this. So, we start off with our pigment now um, a lot of the cheaper paints um, have very little pigment in them and more fillers so what what is a filler well basically a filler is something like this and uh, this just happens to be a chalk based filler there you go that happens to be a chalk based filler and some of that filler is then added to the mix basically what that does it packs out the pigment so you're using less pigment and um, this is all mixed and blended together like this. Um, this is done on an industrial scale, obviously. There you go. So we'll get that pigment mixed in with the filler. And as you can see, it's actually changed the colour of that pigment a little bit. This is why the cheaper paints I've got so much filler in them and you'll find that the color red is not as strong this is what's happened in this case because there's more filler than pigment you'll find that that actual strength of pigment color has changed and when you get um, the more expensive types of paint there's a lot more um, there's a lot more of this in there which is the which is the pigment um, that's why paints are expensive as uh, as you go up the grades up to artist quality paints now what normally happens at this stage is we need to mix all this together and we what we use for that is a disbursement there we are this is a, a pigment disbursement fluid everything I'm telling you today is available on my website for purchase um, so all these additives that I'm using um, are actually on the website but we're not going to go into that today. All we need to do now is mix that pigment together. This is what happens on an industrial scale. This pigment then is mixed and dispersed within the fluid. There, like that. And we need to little, add a little bit more. We need to get this to approximately toothpaste consistency. So it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. So I'm just going to speed the video up a little bit until I get that mixed in well because it can take a little while to do that it's time to learn with our friend Clive so grab your brush have a okay so we got our pigment and filler mixed to a nice consistency like toothpaste um, if you want to paint a little bit thinner then add a little bit more disbursement but the the, the idea here is to get that um, pigment and that filler basically mixed together and dispersed within water so we got basically a paint now if you painted this straight onto a canvas as it is it would dry and just flake away and there's a test that Jason and I did with the water temperature um, again I'll put that in the i card 
uh, to show you exactly what happens there. Now, these um, pigments that I'm using are so finely ground. Um, I don't have to worry about using one of these things. This is what they call a glass mull. And normally you can rub that together. And what it'll do, it'll disperse the pigments and the water together. Um, if I was using natural pigments that I'd found or made myself from ground stones and things, then that's exactly what I would do. And you you will see me doing that on another video, which is in the iCards. So what we need to do to this now, we need to add a few more things. Um, I have got some acrylic additive there. You can see it's quite a a, a thick viscosous viscosous looking liquid a quite a thick liquid that's got um, some anti-foaming agents in it it's also got some retarder in it and again as I said all this is available on the website to purchase so that gets added into the paint we can dispose of the container and now you can see the paint is going to get a little bit thinner but what a lovely color you can see that pigment is actually coming through now this uh, what I put in here is going to stop the paint from foaming up and it's going to retard the paint slightly when you're making your own paints they don't act like they are when they shop bought because they've got an average mix um, which they've decided on um, across the board that they think that most people would like so when you come to mix your own paints, you can decide how thick you want your paint, how thin you want your paint, how quick you want that paint to dry, how slow you want that paint to dry. So, you know, it's, it, you've got a lot of a lot of scope to play around with this paint. Now you can get it; it's getting to a nice consistency there. Now, if you want to thicken this up, you can add a little bit more filler, or you can add a little bit more pigment. Entirely up to you at this stage. I'm just going to leave that as it is for the moment. Um, I'm going to put a drop more retarder in. This is a, a retarder that I make. Uh, again, as I said, it is available on the website. So all I need for that is I'm going to pick up one of these little pipette things. And I'm going to pick up some retarder. And I'm just going to put a few drops of retarder into that paint. And I can add more of this retarder as I want. Um, if the paint dries a little bit quicker than I assume it's going to. So I just add a little bit of retarder into there. There's no um, measurement for that. It's just a personal thing. I got a rough idea now on the quantities I mix, how much paint and retarders, how much retarders I add to the paint, I should say. So there's our paint mix completed there before we add the binder. Now the binder is a is another thing. Um, we need to get some binder, and this is um, pure acrylic. Uh, resin which um, is available on the website and which is which is I purchased um, from a manufacturer and again we need to put a little bit of binder into our pot that's about as all we need about that all the all the details on quantities and things will be available at the end of this video um, so there's there's our binding agent there now what we need to add to that is a little bit of thickener. Um, again, this is um, a, a lovely little thickener that I've, I've got. Um, we only need small amounts of this. This goes a long way. We put one, two, three, four, five little drops in there to start with. Um, and then we need to get um, a stirring stick, which is a, a wooden uh, coffee stick like this. And we'll need to mix that together. And immediately it'll start to thicken. I wanted a little bit thicker than that. Again, this is this is your choice. One, two, three, four, five. This is your choice to 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 get this the way you want it. When you start mixing your own paints, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. Especially when you start painting your own artwork with the paints that you've mixed yourself. So I can continue to get this to the mix that I want. I'm just going to add a few more drops. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, 
And I continue to do that until I get, I want it quite thick, this particular one. There you go, you can see that's now becoming like cream. You should see that's becoming like cream now. Okay, so we need to put that out onto our board. And that's a lovely thickness. I quite like that thickness. So I'm going to mix this together. So that's your acrylic binder that's going to stick all those particles together. All that chalk filler, your retarder, your pigment, mixing it really well together. And we've got acrylic paint. We need to really mix this. Now if you want to use a glass mall, as I said, which is which is this thing there, to to blend this all together then please do that but 99% of the time with the the products that I've got on the website um, I've, this, I've got them to a point where you can just use a, a palette knife and you can see that's a lovely paint now you might ask me at this point um, can it, can this paint be thickened up from from you um, after we've added the resin? Yes, you can just add some more thickener to it like that, and that should work on the polymer bones of the the resin, and that should actually thicken it up. So you can get this as a heavy body paint if you so wish. But that's basically the bones of making your own acrylic paint. So I hope that's answered your questions. What goes into acrylic paint and how acrylic paint is made. So stay tuned and at the end of this um, I will give you some more details um, on how to buy the products and obviously the recipe as well that you'll need to um, go ahead to make your own paints. On the next one I'll show you how to tube your own paints up which is a fantastic thing. So I'll see you there. Bye. But before we get to the nitty gritty let's have a look at what's in the box. So we've selected our box and uh, we've opened it up and it's well packaged. <laughs> so um, let's have a look what's actually in the selection. Now we've got a couple of wooden stirrers there. They're going to come in handy for mixing things like gesso and that. Uh, we'll put them down. We've also got one pair of latex gloves. Now everything in this box is absolutely safe and non-toxic. That's the important thing to remember. So don't worry about that. <laughs> but it's always important to actually get some gloves on just in case things go under your fingernails because we're working with pigments. And um, if you want to put a safety mask on, then please go and purchase um, a, a cheap pair of safety goggles or something like that. And um, even one of them cheap respirators if there's a lot of dust in the air. Um, I err on the side of caution. And that is only my preference. Um, if you if you want to carry on and mix it as it is, that's entirely up to you. But I can't take any responsibility for any problems with sneezing. <laughs> so we've got our latex gloves. Now, also in there, we've got one of these little plastic pipettes. That's for measuring out um, bits of fluid and things like that. And uh, we'll talk about that in one second. Um, we've also got pigment. Now, there's... Um, 60 grams of red pigment there again as i said it's non-toxic and quite safe these are all man-made materials and that is a medium red pigment i've also got um, a yellow pigment again 60 gram bag in there and these can all be bought separately on the channel um, on the shop sorry um, if you want to purchase additional colors then you can go and do that so we've got that there I've also got some um, blue, again, um, that's 60 grams, that's a pure pigment, again, you can see it's just a lovely, lovely blue, lovely blue. 
Um, so we've got red, yellow and blue, which are the primary colours. And again, there are additional colours um, which are going to be on the shop as well. Um, I've also put in some pure titanium oxide or pit 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 titanium white pigment for you. Again, 60 grams, so you can play around with that. In the box also, we've got um, some calcium carbonate. There should be two bags in there. Um, there's a calcium carbonate bag, 100 grams. And there should be also another 100 grams of calcium carbonate as well. And that's for your gessos or your fillers. I've also added um, another 100 grams of fine marble dust. Uh, again, for things like gessos. And obviously you can use this to make other stuff out of this box besides some paint like um, modeling paste and things like that. Now, coming on to the rest of the stuff we got, we, I've got some paint tubes. This is what you're going to be putting your paint into. They're, they're empty tubes, and I'm going to be showing you how to use those as we progress with this video. Um, so there's one, two, three, four. Now, I've got 250 grams of soft gel paste there. Again, this is all made by hand by myself in the studio using all the stuff that you've got in this box, in fact, yes. So this is quite a nice thing. Now you can use the self gel paste you can use for um, using it as an isolation coat on your paintings as well. So it's quite universal. It's, just, it's not just for um, paint making. You can add this to, to extend your original paints as well. If there's any paints you've got you want to extend it a little bit, you will add a little bit of this in. And these are all separate items on the um, shop. Um, again, let's have a look what we've got. We have got a um, 100 mils of pigment disbursement bursement there. That's going to actually disperse the pigment into the fluid that we need to mix. Looking again at our box, I have got some retarder additive for the paint making process. And there's a little bit of anti-foaming agent in there as well. And these are all the things that, that are added into acrylic paint that you would buy from the shop. I've got 10 grams of resin thickener. So this is added to the pure pigment resin, the pure pigment, the pure acrylic resin, and to thicken it. And you think you might th not think that's a lot in there, but I tell you what, a little goes such a long way. And that's why we need this pipette, because we don't want to put too much of that in. Um, I have got some acrylic paint additive. Um, that there is added to the... Um, the, the mix um, it adds the pack it out a little bit and it also adds as a retarder again um, so that's going to help with the mixing and these are all things as I said that are added to acrylic paint that you buy in the shop now we've got two different types of acrylic polymer resin we've got the matte acrylic resin which is 200 mils there um, and that is um, pure uh, resin as I, as I said but it's got a matting agent in it um, and that brings me into the gloss acrylic resin. Um, this is pure gloss. You can use this for glazing and you can use it for an isolation coat. Um, this basically, the soft gel, is just a very thick version of that, which we add this to. So there we are. So you can, you can make more things here than you can actually um, throw a stick at, as they say. You've got a little box of science there, so you can make loads of things. You can make extenders, you can make gessos, you can make um, uh, the, your gloss acrylic resin, you can make that into a soft gel, you can make modeling paste, you can make paint with all these little products that I've given you. This is just a selection of things that you can experiment with, and um, I will be doing lessons with these different things and showing you how to do those things if you want to follow along but essentially that's what's in the box now on the next video i'm going to be showing you how to actually make acrylic paint and then we're going to be moving on to um the other things like modeling paste and gessos as well so but this little box is going to sort you out and then if you want to add things if you've run out of let's just say if you run out of titanium um pigment or any other pigment or any particular thing like this resin thickener then these are all going to be separate items then on the website um, in the shop so you can buy and carry on with your fun and have a lot of fun and stress-free 
paint making process is because once you get to understand how paint is made and how your products are made you'll be, be able to understand how much money you can actually save so thank you very much and i will see you on the next one bye it's time to learn with our friend clive so grab your brush have a great time and don't forget to click subscribe.